I want to speak to the, the moms and grandmas here, the mothers and grandmothers who have had a, a busy Christmas season uh, taking care of your families, yeah, um, cooking and shopping and cleaning and wrapping and visiting and doing all those things to bring family together, night and day, uh, to bring, make this a, a family Christmas. And it may be a, a hard time uh, to do this, and any good time is hard, but especially in Christmas time when people might be estranged from one another or divorced, there might be a death in the family, but you've worked very hard as moms and grandmas uh, for your families. And not just Christmas time, but year round, 24 seven, 365 days a year, because you have a passion for your family. Now, your passion for your family is a gift to society. Our families are, are like the cells of a body. Just as cells are essential to a body, so the family is essential to our society. And strong, healthy cells mean strong, healthy body. Weak, sick cells mean a weak, sick body. So strong, healthy families means a strong, healthy society. And our church celebrates and supports policies for strong, healthy families, such as a living wage, so that both parents do not have to work full time just to keep food on the table. The kids can go to a decent school. The church supports policies for health care, so kids can go to a doctor, and families don't have to choose between uh, going to work or going to the doctor. Immigration reform that unites families. There's all kinds of families, extended families, blended families, grandparents raising grandkids. Many kinds of families make us a strong, healthy society. When Pope Francis visited the United States in September, he came for one reason, to attend the World Congress of Families in Philadelphia. The other trips to Congress in Washington, D.C., to the United Nations in New York, those were side trips. <laughs> the main reason he came was for the World Congress of Families, because families are that important to our society. Not just families important to your family, but to the whole world. So your passion for your family is a gift. Now, our society would have you settle for something less for your family than what God wants for you. Ask expectant parents whether they want the baby to be a boy or a girl, and they'll tell you, whether it's a boy or a girl, we don't know. All we want is that the baby is healthy. healthy. Right. The child grows up and thinks about what to do with their life, and parents tell their child, we don't care what you do with your life. All we want is to do that you do whatever makes you happy, right. Well, today the church does not celebrate the feast of the healthy family. The church does not celebrate the feast of the happy family. The church celebrates the feast of the holy family. Now, healthy is good, happy is good, but the purpose of the family is holiness and nothing else. This is what God wants for you and your family. God dreams your family is holy, not angel wings and halos holy, but knowing the Lord, loving him, and serving God, and loving neighbor as ourself. And in doing so, help God change the world. Like Hannah. Like Hannah. We heard the story of Hannah in the first reading from scripture. The prayer of Hannah had been heard. Hannah was married, but she had no children. She was barren. She went to the temple and Shiloh, she begged and begged and begged in her prayers, cried tears, so much so that the old priest Eli thought she was drunk. Read the story, it's all there. <laughs> she went home and miracles of miracles, wonders of wonders, she conceived and she bore a son. She named her son Samuel. She had an answer to her prayers. When Samuel was weaned and a toddler, then Hannah took her son to the temple. And she found that old priest, Eli, and she said, I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. 
Isn't that wonderful? Well, the Lord hears our prayers. So far, so good. Now I, Hannah said, I in turn give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. So talking about what a spiritual offering, offering our son to the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? But there's more. She put her son in a basket. She covered it with a goat skin. And then she gave the basket to the old priest, Eli. That's when she did it. She gave her only child, her precious son, the answer to her prayers, to Eli. And then she left. She went home. Hannah left Samuel there at the temple. The mother went home without her son. Now, moms and grandmas, you're probably thinking, like, what kind of mother is Hannah? <laughs> I mean, what mother would abandon her only son to the care of an old priest? Nothing against old priests, but that's not what we do. <laughs> <laughs> now, you might be sympathizing and say, okay, there are days and there are years when I'd like to give my kid back, and then it's like, I'm done. God, they're yours. Thank you for the, uh, that was nice, but they're yours. But no, in the end, you love them so much so you would give your life for your children, for your family. So what kind of mother is Hannah? Well, Hannah defies a certain notion of family. From time to time, politicians talk about family values. They make it sound like family values is a book in the Bible. It is not. Instead, the, gospel has, the Bible has gospel values. And the first gospel value is put God first. The Lord gave us ten commandments. The first commandment is, you shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not have other gods besides me. In other words, put God first. Now it's true, the fourth commandment is important. The fourth commandment says, honor your father and your mother. We are to take care of our families. But the first commandment is first. Put God first. Father Jorge Torres uh, was a, used to be a priest here at this parish. Now he's a director of vocations for the Diocese of Orlando. And his position as director of vocations is to invite young men and women to the priesthood, to seminary, to priesthood, and to religious life. And speaking at another parish, Father Jorge said, I don't want your money. And he paused. I want your firstborn. I want your firstborn. Father Jorge was as serious as Hannah. And Hannah challenges that notion that, that the families of our society, that families end all and be all. God wants more for you and your family. So being like Hannah, being a Hannah kind of mom, you know, we have soccer moms and band moms, there's a Hannah mom too, is hard. It's hard in our society. I mean, if, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. But you have to make tough choices to be a Hannah mom. Hannah moms put faith formation class before soccer practice. Hannah moms put church before cheerleading. Hannah moms might send their kids to summer camp at SeaWorld or theater camp, but definitely scripture camp in the summer at San Pedro Center, just 20 minutes down the road. What a gift, it's right here. Hannah Mom wishes she could send her kids to a Catholic school, but Good Shepherd Parish is a long drive, St. Mary Magna is a long drive. But Hannah Mom saved money for a Catholic college. Looking forward to that day of a Catholic university. And they send their high school kids on a mission trip, save money and send your kids on a mission trip with our youth ministry. And if you are blessed financially to sponsor a, a friend of your, of your son or daughter to make that trip with your children. Traveling during the holidays, the Hannah mom insists that the family goes to Mass. You don't care that it is inconvenient and everyone whines. You just say, we don't take a vacation from Mass, period. And Hannah moms put God 
in their home for all to see. Everyone coming in through the front door sees uh, perhaps a little table right there where you have a statue of a saint, a rosary, a crucifix, and they know that God is important in your home, in your family. Hannah moms, at nighttime, they turn off the TV 20 minutes before bedtime. Kids will sleep better. Um, kneel together at the bedside with your children. Thank God for the blessings of the day. Say you're sorry for the ways you failed to love and ask the Lord for the desires of your heart. Teaching your children to know the Lord and pray. This isn't easy to do. Holiness is hard. And the Hannah mom makes tough choices. To put God first in your family. At this point, I'd like to say, put God first and everything will be okay in your family. For Hannah, it was. Even though she left Samuel there at the temple, she went home and lo and behold, she had three more sons and two more daughters. Wonderful. I wish I could say, put God first and your money worries will go away. Put God first, you can sleep soundly th through the night. Put God first, your health will be restored. Put God first and everyone will get along. But there's no guarantees these things will happen. I mean, look at the Holy Family. Jesus married Joseph. Their life was hard. Mary was, became pregnant when she's unmarried, engaged, but not yet married. And she came this close to being stoned to death. Joseph, her fiance, the foster father Jesus, took pregnant Mary into his home. Taking her in, he kissed goodbye his reputation for being a, a good, God-fearing, righteous man. I mean, everyone can count, all could see she was pregnant. Maybe going to Bethlehem was a good thing. <laughs> Escape those wagging tongues. And then Mary gave birth to Jesus, not in a nice hospital with doctors and nurses or even in the home surrounded and filled by family, but she gave birth in a cave surrounded by animals and strangers. And soon they had to flee for their lives. Joseph and Mary had to flee to Egypt. King Herod was hunting for this newborn king of the Jews and they fled to Egypt and lived as refugees for two years. Jesus was a refugee. And years later, after Jesus had grown up, Mary stood powerless to witness Jesus, her son, be tortured, crucified, and die a horrible, shameful death. A sword piercing her heart would have been easier to bear. Holiness is hard. Putting God first in your family, it's not easy. It's hard to be a Hannah mom. But when you put God first in your family, when you are a Hannah mom, God can form your family into a holy family, united in peace and joy, able to trust the Lord in good times and bad, as Hannah did. And God can even use your family to change the world. Remember, Hannah left Samuel there at the temple? There's more to the story. There's more to the story that changed the world. Samuel grew up in the temple. Samuel became a priest and a prophet. And the Lord sent Samuel to a shepherd boy and to anoint this shepherd boy named David and make him king, becoming King David. Without Samuel, there is no King David. But because Samuel was there, David became king. And King David established the kingdom of Israel. His reign gave hope to the people of God. They looked forward to a future son of David to establish the reign of God. A thousand years later, long after Hannah was dead and buried, long after Samuel was gone from the scene, another child was born. He was of the house of David. He was a king of kings, the Lord of lords, promised through the ages. He was born to save the world. This was God's plan. And his plan to save his people was put in motion when Hannah left Samuel there. Her sacrifice made possible 
and salvation of the world. All this happened because Hannah left Samuel there.